It seems like every single year, DJI is putting out the latest and greatest technology that still costs thousands of dollars to acquire. What if I told you that you could build something for less than a thousand bucks, has more longevity, and is better than a DJI drone? Let's find out in this video. Hey guys, Dylan Gorman here. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know who I am, I've been a commercial drone pilot for coming up on 11 years now with six of those primarily focusing on drone photogrammetry and mapping. Now, this is a little bit of a different video where we're gonna talk about DIY systems and particularly how a DIY system is gonna be better and cheaper than a DJI drone, similar to what we see right here. But let me kind of explain why that is. Now, as someone who has been flying DJI drones back in the early days of 2013 with their Phantom series, fast forward to today with their N350 series, it's safe to say that it's pretty hard to beat DJI at its own game. But at the time of filming this video here, there's a lot of politics going around the United States in regards to the banning of DJI drones, completely outright, which is really not good. There are hundreds of thousands of people that have invested hundreds to thousands and even tens of thousands of dollars in a DJI system, whether that's the drones, the batteries, or the payloads. So there's a lot of people that could be hurting here very, very soon. So with this proposed DJI ban, many drone service providers, also known as DSPs, are being pushed towards this American drone, which could cost three to 10 times more than what DJI currently has out there, right? These are other manufacturers that exist here in the United States. They build fantastic systems, but they are very expensive as you can see here on the screen. But what if I told you that you can actually build your own drone for less than $10,000? Don't worry, you can even build it less than that for around 5,000 or maybe even less than that at what I have here on the table in front of me for about 1,500 bucks. That is better again, cheaper than what DJI has to offer and gives you unlimited flexibility of upgrades, meaning you can put different motors on there, use different batteries, different camera payloads, different GPS systems. The list really goes on endlessly as it's fully customizable. But we're gonna be focusing on one very specific system today, and that is called the Holy Bro X650 Dev Kit. Now, this is not a sponsored video at all. I used my own money to buy all of these components that you see in front of me here. And all of this costs about $1,500, which honestly is not bad for the size of system that we're about to build today. In this box here is the Holy Bro X650 Dev Kit. Basically everything that comes in this box is everything that you need to get a fully functional system, excluding the batteries. The cost of this specific kit is about $900. They also have a few other models on there too that you can get for anywhere from 450 bucks all the way up to $1,000. Again, it comes with everything that you need. And then I went ahead and bought this $210 controller here, which will allow me to really use it endlessly on multiple different systems that I build. And then moving to my right-hand side here, this is the battery and the charging station. Now, we know that when it comes to batteries from DJI, those are not cheap. You're talking anywhere from $100 to $700, depending if you're buying for the M350 per battery. Well, this 8,000 milliamp hour battery, this is only $163. And then on top of that, I also bought this universal charger. So what's great about this is if I get bigger batteries or smaller batteries for really any system that I have out there, this charger will work for all of them. And it has smart charging technology, very similar to what DJI has with their intelligent battery series. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start building the system, putting it piece by piece, and then we're gonna get it configured on the computer. And then we're gonna give it a test flight. Putting up this box here, we have our plates, our mounting plates. This would be where our frame connects to, our propellers. We have our autopilot, so we have the Pixhawk 6C. Looks like our telemetry radios, all of our mounting hardware and screws. Have our GPS, some more mounting plates, power delivery board, landing gears it looks like, some tools, and then most importantly, our 
boom arms with our motors already attached, our ESCs already attached, and all of the wiring ran through. And what's really cool about this specific system is that the arms, I believe, are folding. Here are our connectors. And so if I unscrew this guy right here, say this is connected to the drone, what off? It should. Yep, there it goes. Folds down. That is pretty freaking awesome. This will be my first time ever building a drone. Now, I did do some research beforehand. There's some great YouTube channels that I'm gonna link down below. One of them being Mads Tech. This guy is phenomenal. He has great, great guides all over his YouTube channel. And there's also a few other channels that I'm gonna link down below that are great resources. So shout out to those guys for my weekend research before I actually built this guy here. So let's get to building. The build guide is directly on Holy Bros website. Again, I'm gonna throw links down in the description for absolutely everything. I'm just gonna do time lapse here, so let's go ahead and get started. Now that we're out here in the field, let's truly take a look at how this custom build compares to something like this DJI Air 3 here. Now, obviously, in the beginning of this video, we talked a little bit about the DJI Mavic 3, but pretty much any DJI drone flies the exact same. Now, when it comes down to the difference of these airframes, obviously, this guy is much bigger than the Air 3 that I have here, and even the controller, right? This is pretty much the entire setup, you know, plus my iPhone to actually see what's going on with the drone, where in comparison with the custom built that I have right here, plus this controller, and then one thing that you can't see behind is my actual computer so that I can see all the telemetry basically see what's going on with the drone. Yeah, there's a little bit more components in comparison to that, but that's really not that big of a deal. And I'm gonna show you exactly why. So when it comes to actually setting up this system, obviously there's a few more steps involved than just picking up a DJI Air 3. But one of the things that I love specifically about this X650 from Holy Bro is, well, the ability to put the boom arm up and tie it to the frame. Now, obviously, if you have the DJI Air 3 or something similar, you can just throw that into the pocket and it's much easier to transport, but this just gives you so much more flexibility. For you photographers and videographers out there, you're probably saying, well, isn't it just easy to get a drone like the DJI Air 3 or even the Mini? Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on that point. It is much easier for that specific application, but when you want the ability to truly expand the functionality of your drone without spending thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm talking about you, Mavic 3 Enterprise, costing about $5,000 for the full setup, where this is far less than that and you can get better quality, which you will see in a future video in this series that I'm putting together on how to make sure that you are not fully reliant on one system. But anyways, getting this guy set up is relatively straightforward. We're just gonna put the boom arms up just like so and make sure that we actually fully tighten them. We don't want any mishaps out here. And then for the battery, we can see the slot that I have right here. So simply to insert our battery, right? I've got our battery right here. We're just gonna put it into these Velcro straps. And yes, this is more than enough to hold this battery in place. We're gonna strap it down. And then all we have left to do is just connect these battery leads together. The drone will boot up. Once it boots up, I'll show you exactly how we're gonna get this guy up and running. It's truly a straightforward process, much easier than what you're probably thinking of how to get something like this up and operational. Now, the one thing that you do have to keep in mind when booting up a custom built drone, and this is something that they teach you, or you should take into precaution, is before actually booting up the drone, you wanna make sure that your controller is on first, just in case if there's any missions loaded on it or anything, the drone's not gonna turn on without a link to the controller and just do whatever it wants, right? So having the controller already on, disarmed, and having basically all the throttles down, which on DJI drones, they just tell you to turn it on and it's gonna be fine. In the past, uh, that used to not be the case. Obviously nowadays, it's a whole lot easier. But in this case, we're gonna make sure that the controller's on first, and then we're going to plug in our battery. You're gonna hear the little beep. It's gonna beep at me. We're gonna wait for a GPS link. There we go. 
So as we can see, or as we can hear, the device has been fully booted up. I actually already have my laptop booted up as well, so that's gonna be my uh, mission control center. So I'll be able to pull all of the data that's coming off this drone. It's gonna get sent to the laptop so I can see what's happening in real time. And then obviously the controller here is what's going to allow me to manipulate controlling the drone itself. All right, so just behind me here, we have the drone, and what I'm gonna do is pull up my computer screen so you can see exactly what's going on. What we're taking a look at here on my computer screen is called Mission Planner. So basically, this is how you can fully configure your drone. You can have full customizability, full function, full host of absolute control over the entire drone, which is something that I do like that you can't do with the DJI drone. You basically get what you get, which for the most part, they do fly flawlessly. But with something like this, you can do some tuning to make it more efficient, carry different payloads, really do whatever you want. You don't have that flexibility with a DJI drone. And on top of that, Mission Planner is an open source application. So there are no data limitations to it. So what we can see here on the right-hand side of the screen, this is the map. This allows us to see physically where the drone is in that 2D space. On the top left-hand side of the screen, this is our full telemetry, which is that PixHawk board that's on there gives us full range of motion of the drone. So as soon as I take it off, you're gonna see that our horizon starts increasing, and depending on how I maneuver the drone, you're also going to see that come into effect as well. On there, we also get a lot of information about our battery voltage, so that's something that's a big misconception that you can't track your battery life or anything on there. There's also some other information on there depending on what kind of mode that I put the drone into. So when I put it into a loader mode, Think of that as a GPS hold that we're familiar with with most DJI drones. We also have a stabilize just to make sure that it's just not doing some weird stuff. And then we have actual a return to land. So in the event that I feel uncomfortable with where the drone is, I can flip a switch, it'll automatically come back and land. Because it has a GPS on there, it's going to land roughly in the same area of where we're sitting. So now let's send this up in the air. What I'm gonna do is turn on the arm button our motors start spinning up, and now I can go ahead, take the drone off, put it into a loader mode, and now it's holding its position. And then I'm just gonna take it off and fly like normal. So you can see on the computer screen where the drone is. You can see the altitude that it's flying to. You can also see the position that I'm flying. So full range of motion. You can even see as it starts turning around, it turns around on the computer as well. So full range of motion, just like any other drone that you'd be flying. So what I'm gonna do is bring it back to us over here. So there we go, it's in a GPS hold mode right now. I think I got my throttle going down a little bit but it's not perfect, it's pretty good. If I were to upgrade the antenna on this, which I will be doing in a future video, it's gonna have a much tighter hold. But look at that. We got a beautiful drone in action here. And based on my testing, with the exact system that I have set up, the exact payload with a little GoPro on there, you can get 30 minutes of flight time out of this guy. One of the biggest misconceptions about custom drones is 12 to 15 minutes of flight time. That's not the case. I can even throw a bigger battery in this and get closer to 45, 50 minutes, obviously without a payload. So we're gonna take it in for landing and disarm it. <laughs> there we go. That's really how easy it is to get something like this set up, get it built and get it fully operational. It's not as complex as it used to be in the past. So. In future videos of this series, I'm going to build this out. I'm going to be adding more functionality to this. And again, it's still gonna be far less than any of those enterprise drones that you'd be buying from DJI. Plus, replacement parts are far cheaper and really easy to obtain. That pretty much wraps up this video. But in the next video, we're actually going to be doing some minor updates to the Holy Bro drone to compete directly with the M350 that I have right here. Keep in mind, this is a $12,000 drone. That doesn't even take into account the $6,500 camera payload that you have to buy for this in order for it to be considered a mapping drone. 
With this guy, we're gonna spend far less than $6,500, and that even includes the camera package to get this guy up and running and honestly beat the M350. So if that's something that you wanna see, be sure to subscribe. If you wanna see more videos from me in the future, subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and drop a comment on what you think about this Holy Bro X650 and if this is something that you would even consider. Maybe not this drone, but building your own custom drone to basically get whatever you want out of it. With that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.